our, our thing that we've done. And then we're going to go into a kind of a conversation about some of the issues that we face in the fall time of the year with all the things that are going on. So we're just going to kind of refresh and talk about, talk about that stuff. Uh, there is an hour's worth of time for this. If you uh, have not signed up on, on the uh, EMS portal, go ahead and do that. Um, I'll be marking you guys complete when we're done. So first off, this is the COVID update current as of today. Some of you guys probably watch this pretty, pretty close. Um, total new cases today were 536, uh, which has kind of been the norm here lately. I believe the seven day average is about 421. Um, the currently hospitalized number is still the number that is really the big number to look at. Um, according to our health systems in our state, uh, our, our hospitals are have been able to handle this number. Um, the deaths did increase by, I believe, 13 today. So that's, uh, that's not good that we're seeing the uptick there. Uh, but uh, our, the big thing is that currently hospitalized when we're having these large numbers of cases is keeping that number manageable for our, our healthcare systems. Here's kind of the area county um, active case count. It's, again, this is as of today. Brown County sitting at 216. Day County's at 30. Spink is at 29. Falk is at 20. Marshall 11. McPherson 8. And Edmond 6. And these do fluctuate quite a bit throughout the weeks. There's, there's some times where we have the, the uh, active cases tick up for a couple of days and we get some recoveries. Um, so these, these fluctuate quite a bit. Um, just some, uh, some reminders is just obviously know what your department's protocols are when you're going on calls. Make sure you're wearing your PPE, uh, another big one. And then, you know, consult with your, your hospital that you're, that you're traveling to with your patients to make sure that, that you know what the latest and greatest PPE and what you should be doing. Um, clean your rigs always continue to clean the rigs and keep on training, uh, whether that's training on your protocols when it comes to COVID or just training in general. Um, we've had a pretty rough um, patch here since March or so. So just make sure that you're, you're, you're adapting and you're training. I know a lot of you are meeting in person. Some still aren't meeting in person, but make sure you're utilizing the, the platforms, the Zoom, the GoToMeeting, um, WebEx, things like that, to make sure that you continue to train and continue to um, keep your skills up, even if you're not able to meet in person. And if your service or your department has any questions and how to, how to maybe set some of that stuff up, if you're not real sure, you can always contact me or I, I'm sure Michaela can even help you out with that. But contact one of us and we can we can help you figure out what's the best way to do it and, and kind of how to do that if you're having trouble. I know most everybody's probably been to hundreds and some of you probably thousands of Zoom meetings in the last six or seven months. So it's just like normal to you, but some of you maybe aren't as familiar with this sort of thing. So one thing I kind of want to hit on tonight, it's something that um, I had a conversation with a, a, a good friend of mine who is in the EMS field. And this is something that is kind of difficult to to talk about, um, but what we wanna make sure that we're doing is being mindful of what we're doing when we're not on our calls. Be mindful of the situations that you put yourselves in. I know all of you, or the majority of you on here, maybe some of you aren't, but who are, somebody have a question? Oh, just, okay. Um, the majority are volunteers, and we're not about to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. Sorry, my computer's having a mind of its own here. There we go. We're not here to tell you what you should and shouldn't do, but just be mindful of the situations that you put yourselves in when you're not on calls. Also, if you do have an exposure and your department protocols are in place that don't allow you to go on calls, don't go. If you're feeling sick, make sure that you are not in a position where you feel that you have to go on this specific call 
and potentially put others at risk of infection. So make sure your lines of communication with your, with your EMT, EMR paramedic groups that you work in are wide open. So if, if you're feeling sick at all, you're, you're not going on calls. And then just the protocols, the departments and services should be talking about what happens if we have close contacts? How does, how does this all work? What should we do? Um, who's limited on going on calls? How many people do we have left when we, when we go on calls? So, you know, just make sure that, that you're talking about that stuff. Um, any questions on COVID, any comments, concerns? Like I said, that's just kind of a really brief, some of it's a reminder, just kind of that update. Again, covid.sd.gov is the place you find all the good information that our states put out there. Um, anybody, any questions, any comments, any concerns about anything? All right. Well, we're going to move on to what we're going to talk about as far as our other continuing education um, topic tonight. And then when we're done with this, we're gonna kinda tell you guys how it's gonna go and what we're gonna do as we, as we move forward. So what we're gonna talk about is the fall, the season fall, uh, a little bit of trauma talk with that. So these are the four topics we're gonna hit on. And I encourage you guys to unmute your mics if you have any comments, any, any questions anything to add. Um, I am presenting to you guys tonight. Um, I'm not always gonna be the presenter on these calls. I did have somebody lined up, but uh, they had something come up last minute and uh, I'm stepping in and, and kind of doing our talk here tonight. So we're gonna talk football, we're gonna talk harvest, we're gonna talk livestock moving, we're gonna talk a little bit about hunting. So football, we're halfway or better through the high school season. And a lot of your services, a lot of you guys are going to be doing standbys uh, for these football games. So the one thing we're going to kind of talk about on the football side is, you know, remember and review your protocols on your lower extremity injuries. Uh, a lot of the injuries that we're seeing in football are those um, knees, ankles, those lower extremity type injuries. When a tackle happens, somebody gets their, their knee twisted or you know, leg broken, you know, in worse scenarios. So review those protocols on what to do and what your equipment is when you're dealing with those lower extremity injuries. Uh, blunt force trauma, again, that's another one that we deal with, whether it's to the head or it's to the body. Um, head injuries, there's a big one there, or concussions. So make sure you're reviewing the protocols there. And then also understanding the protocols that the high school has in place for allowing somebody back on the field or having them seek medical attention. In a lot of your communities, you guys are the healthcare providers. So if something, if somebody's not um, right on the sidelines, a lot of times they'll be bringing them to the ambulance. So understand those protocols, understand those things when it comes to concussions. And then also shock. And this is one that I, I was reading through some stuff today. And shock is a big one if we have some of that blunt force trauma to the abdomen area where somebody could end up with a, a contusion to the abdomen and have, you know, internal bleeding. That's not something that's unheard of. So review your protocols, review your, review your uh, procedures on dealing with somebody who is in shock. Does anybody have anything to add on, on football? Anything that I missed? Like I said, I kind of threw this together pretty quick this afternoon. Anybody seeing any injuries this year? Is there anybody on this call tonight? <laughs> you guys are quiet. All right, moving on. Harvest time of year. Just kind of getting into full swing. Most everybody's rolling. Some people are even done already when it comes to harvest. So lots of moving parts, and you can construe that in a lot of different ways. The equipment that we're using has lots of moving parts, and there's also lots of moving parts that go into harvest. There, this year is obviously a little bit different than last year. Um, on the better side of things, uh, we, we did end up with long spells without rain, but for the most part, the things that I'm hearing, the, the crops are coming in relatively good. Um, 
The thing that we don't have our backs against the wall with like we did last year is the weather. So that has, I think, been a nice um, change. People aren't having to move nearly as fast and cut nearly as many corners when it comes to harvesting. Um, so that, that is, is a good thing. I know I've talked to a couple of services who have had, who have had some harvest related uh, soft tissue type injuries. You know, people are using their hands, working on equipment that gets broke down. Um, they're doing certain things that um, you know, they have their hand in the wrong place, they could have injuries. If they have their foot in the wrong place, they could have injuries. Dropping things onto um, toes and feet and things like that. So the soft tissue orth orthopedic type injuries um, are things that we're looking at there. Um, again, understand that a lot of those folks who are gonna have those types of injuries those areas are going to be um, probably pretty dirty. So make sure that, make sure that, um, that we are cleaning those out as best as we can, wrapping them up, understanding what actually happened so we can relay that on to the doctor so they can make sure that they are cleaning those wounds out uh, the best that they can to prevent the infections. Uh, falls from heights. Uh, we have people that are working on top of bins, potentially, on top of trucks, tarping trucks, on top of grain carts, doing, doing uh, preventative maintenance stuff, or working on parts that might not be working. Um, we're, we're seeing people crawling in and out of combines. Combines are a little bit higher than our normal, our normal agricultural um, equipment. Uh, people climbing up ladders, climbing down ladders multiple times a day sometimes. So those falls from heights are another type of incident that we see an uptick in the fall time of year. <clears throat> Motor vehicle accidents. I did see somebody just chimed in on the chat that um, uh, that they're at work and lots and lots of truck traffic. This time of year, um, I got some, some percentages from the Highway Patrol and the truck traffic locally, local truck traffic increases anywhere from 50 to 60% this time of year, because what we have going is we have harvest going with all the semis on the road, transporting the, transporting the finished product, product to elevators, to um, places of sale, ethanol plants, things like that. But as we're gonna talk about here in a little bit, is this is also prime time season for cattle to be moving on the highways. So the number of grain trucks and the number of cattle trucks that are out there on the highways increase drastically over these end of September through mid-November. Um, so again, those motor vehicle accidents, slower moving equipment on the highway. I was on Highway 12 one of these days this last week here. I don't remember which day it was, but there was a combine going down the road, which I totally understand. They have to use those roads to go from field to field, but there was a string of about 15 cars behind it. So that road, everybody knows that, that that highway is is sometimes difficult to pass even um, when there's not slow moving equipment on it. So just be alert for that stuff. And then also when you do get called to those accidents, because there are upticks and accidents as well this time of year, is make sure that you have enough people on those calls. Because if we're out on the highway and we have a, a, a truck accident or we have uh, an accident with a slower moving vehicle, there tends to be more people involved in it. And not necessarily that they need medical attention, but there's more people that are stopping. There's more, there's more chaos, in my opinion, on some of these scenes because we do have traffic backed up like we do and we do have more people out there. So make sure you guys have enough people going on those calls to where we can control the scene and um, help those people who are injured. <clears throat> Um, again, with harvest, make sure you're training with your, with your fire department. You're having those conversations uh, on their rescue capabilities. When you take a jaws of life piece of equipment and start working with it in the agricultural setting, it behaves a lot different than when you're trying to cut a car apart. So strongly encourage you guys to talk with your FDs either this year or into the future and understand what their rescue capabilities are gonna be on some of that heavier built, stronger built 
farm equipment. Um, there's a whole class that goes on on, on uh, um, agricultural equipment extrication, and it's it's completely different from from um, just normal vehicle extrication. Any questions, comments, concerns on what we're seeing in harvest across our great area of Northeast South Dakota? I'm just gonna throw a little tidbit out there. If you go up to your, your uh, kind of menu, there's gonna be a thing that says polls in there. So Michaela did put together some polls um, some things that they're asking. So if you guys could take those polls, click on that, take those polls as we go, that would be fantastic. So again, um, sticking with our fall time of year, uh, livestock. There's a lot of producers right now who are rounding up and selling or working their calves. Um, it is prime time season to sell those and get those off the farm. Um, so, or farm or the ranch. So now is the time that they're doing that. Um, traumatic injuries can happen, and they can happen in some very difficult places. We could have people getting run over by cattle. We could have people getting um, injured in vehicle accidents out, out in some remote areas. Uh, Four-wheelers, horses, all that stuff is used to, to round these, these uh, animals up um, as they're taking them to, uh, to the sale barns, to feedlots, wherever they're taking them and uh, those traumatic injuries can happen. And they can happen in very difficult places to reach with an ambulance. Especially this time of year, the way our weather's been, a lot of these people are keeping their cattle out in the pastures. So they're loading some of these calves up out in pastures in remote places. I talked to a, a, uh, uh, an individual who drives um, cattle truck and some of their areas that they're going is they go back off main highways into pastures, you know, a half mile, a mile, even further sometimes. So if you think about your ambulance and you think about trying to bounce that out across even a, a half a mile of prairie, um, what are we gonna have left by the time we get there? Our ambulances aren't, don't have huge big tires on them. They, they aren't all terrain ambulances. Usually they, they run pretty low to the ground. They're the van style. Um, so think about that side of it when, um, especially this time of year when we could have um, accidents and injuries out in remote places. So consider that helicopter support. Even if that injury doesn't come in as something very, very critical, the helicopter support could be very helpful in some of these cases to make sure that that injury does not get to the point of critical. So you may have to expand your helicopter um, dispatch protocols when you get called to an area that is quite a ways off the road or that you can't even get to with an ambulance. Some services have side-by-side -side type vehicles that they can reach these these remote areas easier. Um, so if you're if you're lucky enough to have those types of vehicles, great. Uh, make sure that if you do get called to these areas and you're working in those livestock yards uh, around animals that you are very cognizant of your surroundings and that you protect yourself so you don't become injured as well. Um, again, uh, we might need more people on these because we might have to carry a patient longer distances to get them to the ambulance. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns talking about the livestock side of things? You can put them in the chat or you can ask them. or you can just let me keep going. That's okay too. <clears throat> so our next topic is gonna be um, hunting. I think that's our next topic, right? Yep. So we're getting to that season. There are some seasons open up, opening up already and have been open for a little while. So be prepared for anything when it comes to hunting accidents. Um, I've been in EMS for I don't know, coming up on 20-ish years, and it always seems like there's something new that happens over, over hunting season um, that either you experience or you hear about that's like, wow, never thought something like that could happen. And it's, you know, directly related to the uptick in, in people out and about hunting, um, people from other states coming in, doing, doing that stuff, maybe not as experienced when it comes to 
um, you know, using the the uh, caliber of guns that they're using or um, just some of the, the basic safety things that we're also very um, cognizant of because we've kind of grown up with it. Uh, falls is a big one hunting on the hunting side of things again uh, with people going into tree stands and out of tree stands. So that's another big one. Uh, I'm checking the chat as I go here, guys. So sorry. Michaela, you just want to keep an eye on the chat and if there's something for me, go ahead and. Uh, um, yes, I can do that. Yep. Yeah, just go ahead and, and stop me. Um, again, hitting on the falls, in and out of tree stands. Uh, a lot of times these people are going to be by themselves. So we may not know exactly where they are. So those always add to um, the emergency when we get somebody that calls in and says that they fell out of a tree stand, but they don't quite know how to get EMS there. It's sometimes difficult. Sometimes you're going to have to use law enforcement friends to ping their phone. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with that, talk to your local sheriff's department and understand how that works in your, in your jurisdiction. It's gotten a lot easier and a lot faster over the years. So, um, you know, understand if you have to do something like that, um, how it works. Accidental shootings, whether it is, it is BBs from shotguns or it is um, high powered rifles. We see a handful of those across our state every year. Uh, some years are more than others. I have a feeling, and I don't know this for sure, and nobody's really said this for sure, but I think that we're gonna have probably either a near normal or even above normal uh, hunting season. And for some of the reasons is there's gonna be a lot of soybean and corn that's out of the fields. So I think pheasant hunting is gonna be phenomenal in our state this year. And I think with the ability to do this stuff outside and the ability to, to have other folks from these other states who are maybe still locked down a little bit uh, to come in and kind of be a little bit, have a little more freedom, I think we're gonna see an uptick in, in uh, hunting uh, this year. A vehicle accident, we always see upticks in vehicle accidents during hunting season and usually those tend to be um, more the MCI type of accidents where we have maybe more than two, three, four, five people involved because they're, they're taking their vehicles from one hunting area to the other. Um, a lot of times these people, these groups that are, that are hunting on um, preserves or guide services, they'll be in a, a bus, either a, a small bus or a larger bus. And um, the, the, uh, the possibility of having uh, an MCI type of an accident uh, does escalate with these types of vehicles out on on the roads. Um, also, if you have, you know, out of state type hunters, and I'm, I'm glad that they come to our state, they give us a lot of money, but sometimes they're not real familiar with either traffic laws, they're not familiar with road conditions, they're not familiar with you know, Joe's Road having a culvert washed out from the heavy rain that we had early this year that has not been fixed yet. They don't understand that that road is, has a, and, and in some of our counties, we have like two cones set up and everybody knows that Joe's Road's washed out so we don't go down that. But some of these people that are coming in from other areas, other states, they don't know that. So they might be going down those roads and hitting those washouts and becoming injured. So uh, be aware of those things. Strains and sprains, we have people walking in fields. We have people doing things uh, out on the prairies where they could step in holes, they could um, roll their ankles, strain or sprain um, lower extremities to where they're maybe unable to walk and we're gonna be called to help them out. And then cardiac related emergencies. For the most part, a lot of us have probably spent a little bit more time at home this year um, GMs were closed for a while, uh, so hopefully everybody stayed in great shape, but I think this year more than others is maybe some of these folks that are hitting the fields maybe aren't in the be better shape or the best shape that they've been in uh, due to some of the differences that we've had this year. So cardiac related emergencies, always be cognizant of those. Uh, usually we see a handful of those in our area. Uh, every every hunting season where people are out walking the fields and uh, they're not used to that strenuous activity 
and they end up maybe having chest pains later that night or um, maybe even go into cardiac arrest out in the field. So um, be aware of that and, um, you know, be cognizant of, of those things. Anybody have any questions, comments, concerns on any of these topics that we've talked about? Anything to add? Okay. So now we're going to talk about a couple other things. That's kind of the end of our, our training portion of the night, but I still want you guys to all stay on because we've got some really good things to talk about as we, as we finish up here tonight. The South Dakota EMS Association Conference is going to be virtual this year. It is going to be October 22nd. That Thursday evening is the executive council meeting. Uh, but the main, the main stuff starts October 23rd on Friday. And if you have not signed up for it yet, or you don't know what I'm talking about, it is $100 to sign up. That does include your $30 membership fee for the year. You can go to sdemta.org to register. And from the looks of things, this conference looks very, very good. Um, they have it very well organized. Uh, they do have, I talked to um, Amy Marsh on last Saturday, and they have over 180 people registered already, which is very good. So I think they're hoping for kind of that three to 400 range, uh, and that's very much attainable. So if you have not signed up for it and you want more information, you can go to sdemta.org to register and get that information. Um, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me now, or you can put them in the chat. It's fine. So anybody has any questions on that conference at all? Hearing none, we'll continue to move on. Um, we do, we are planning, we're in the early stages of planning this. The winter slash spring, whatever you want to call it, uh, Northeast South Dakota AHEC, South Dakota EM, I got an extra A in there, should be EMSA, uh, District 4 mini conference is going to be held February 19th, February 20th, and February 21st on the campus of Presentation College here in Aberdeen, South Dakota. We are planning for an in person conference with a virtual option, just like we had last year. That platform's probably gonna be a little bit better with things that we've learned over the last seven or eight months. We will be planning it with the ability to go 100% virtual if needed. So we've kind of set a date and we've been in contact with our friends at presentation on what they're gonna allow based on what we can do. So when they give us the either the okay that we can still plan for an in-person or if they say no we're not going to allow people on our campus which we totally understand due to the situation um, we will be sure to let you guys all know which route we're going to go but as of now as of today we are planning for in-person with the vir virtual option uh, more info to come on this as we get closer but just remember those dates jot those down um, to make plans to be in Aberdeen or to log in virtually. Um, some of the things that we did last year uh, with the people that were logged in virtually, they could not do a lot of the practicals. So we did give them some other options so they were able to get their 20 hours. But this year, I think if we are able to have at least a partial group in person, um, we're gonna be able to allow those virtual folks an opportunity to take part in some of the hands-on training that we're going to be offering. <clears throat> okay, so next thing is Chase the Ace fundraiser. So this is still happening. Um, week four is going to be drawn on uh, next Friday. Uh, we did push it back a week for those of you that maybe purchased tickets. We did push it back from this week to next week just due to kind of a lack of ticket sales. We have been a little bit, of, bit slow out of the gate, but one thing that I want to throw out there 
is we have had some extremely generous folks donate to this thing to get it going. Um, and we need your guys' help to make it successful. So if you enjoy these calls, you appreciate these calls, please go to nesdahec.org to purchase your tickets. Also, go to that website to check out the new and improved AHEC website. Some of you who were involved in the conference or the mini conference last year at PC, there are some really great photos up on, on their page to look at. That's where these webinars are gonna be archived as well as we go. And there's a lot of really good information for um, a, a lot of different folks on that website, including EMS people. So jot down that website, make sure that you're visiting that website. And if you're able to purchase tickets um, every week, we're not asking you to buy 30 or 40 of them, but if you want to, that's great. Um, you know, buy a ticket or two a week. That, that is what is keeping us going with this right now and allowing us to use these platforms uh, that AHEC has so graciously helped us build and, and, and get going for us. And we just want to make sure that we have um, some funds to be able to continue this stuff. There's also a tab on there just for donations. So if you or your service maybe wants to, well, how can we help out? And, and we don't want to necessarily buy a ticket and put somebody's name on it. There's a tab just to make a donation, which is a really great feature that they added. So think about it. Um, go ahead and get on that website. And I'm gonna have Michaela explain a little bit what Chase the Ace is if some of you don't know. Um, but also remember that our group can, the more money that our group can raise, the more training, the more services, the more scholarships and the more grants that this can provide for departments and for EMTs in our district. The ultimate goal on this fundraiser is to get some dollars in the bank to where we can offer these up as scholarships and grants to services and EMTs who are, are trying to, our future EMTs, who are trying to either get classes going in their area to help defray some of their expenses, and then also to EMT students who maybe don't have the ability to, to reserve a spot in an EMT class just based on the dollars. We don't want people to have to not go to EMT class because they can't afford it. That's something we really wanna take away from our area up here and potentially all the way across the state. So if you're able to, or your service is able to um, make a donation, we would greatly appreciate that. Michaela, you wanna talk a little bit about Chase the Ace? Um, yeah, I can. If you wanna stop sharing, I can pull up the website and I'll kind of walk it through on how to get there and everything through that as well. How, how about I do my, I think I have one slide left. I'll do that and then we'll go back Perfect. to that. Sound good? Perfect, yep, sounds good. Okay, so our next meeting is gonna be October 29th. So two weeks from today, I believe that is, two or three weeks from today. Maybe it's three, I don't know. It is uh, three. Yep. Three, okay. This week's kind of ran together on me here. So three weeks from today, we're gonna to have our next meeting. What topics do you guys wanna see? Now this is a time where you have to unmute and you have to give me some feedback. What topics would you guys like to see? So that it says mute, and if you have a, a, a red line across it, you can take that off and then you can talk. Okay, guys, please. <laughs> Need a little bit of help on this one. This is Nancy. I yes. always find the trauma uh, sessions interesting because we all have so many various experiences with the trauma calls we go on. Any insight sure. on the trauma would be great. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? And Kyle, I did put on our second poll I put out there, I did ask which topic areas you would like to see more of. Perfect. And we got some responses on that as well. Awesome. So you don't need to unmute. You can just do the poll. Awesome. Thank you, Michaela. Great job. Uh, so we also guest speaker ideas. If anybody has any guest speakers in your community who are great at a specific topic or they're local experts, or you think that you would like to share those guest speakers with the rest of our group, let me know, email me, uh, call me, text me, whatever you wanna do, and let me know who they are and what their topic is. Because as we build these, um, 
my thought was kind of to make this big, long, year-long um, training calendar. But what I think we're going to do is we're going to maybe go two or three months at a time. Because if we see it on certain times a year, it might be very good to do certain talks. Or if we see an uptick of something in our area, it might be very good to do those talks. So I think we're going to kind of do maybe a three to six month type calendar on the topics that we're going to do. And those topics are going to fit right in with some of the monthly trainings that maybe you guys are doing with your services. Now, again, this training that we're providing is not supposed to take, take away and take, take the place of your monthly trainings that you're doing with your service. So just remember that this is a, a supplement to it. So use this as just an extra opportunity to get some hours and to get some, some training on maybe a topic that you missed with your monthly training or you just want to know more information about. So get those ideas to me. Uh, let me know. Uh, if you guys have anybody, that would be great. We've got a cache of instructors that we can tap to do certain topics. But if you have somebody in your area, whether it's a physician, a nurse, an EMT, a doctor, whoever, we would love to have them and love to get their, their ideas on the specific topic that they are fluent in. So with that, I think that's my last slide. Yep, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Michaela's gonna talk a little bit more about Chase the Ace. Take it away, Michaela. Okay, so I guess I'll just kind of walk you through kind of what how our website has it up as. So if you go to the NESD AHEC website, you can see this is what you land on. And we have this little clicky button right here that you can click and it gets us to the Chase the Ace page. Or you can just type nesdahec.org slash ace and you'll get to this page as well. So what Chase the Ace is, is a fundraiser that allows for not only the organization or groups that are fundraising to earn money, but also to give back to the people who are like helping raise that money as well. So each week we draw, or yeah, each week we draw 50 of that week of the ticket sales, 10% goes to the weekly winner. And there will be a weekly winner every week who gets 10% or in our case, or not our case, but with this, it's either 10% or $25, whichever is greater. Because we know most of the time people are buying 10% doesn't necessarily mean the amount. So, but 25 or greater or whichever is greater. Um, so 10% of the weekly sales go to the drawing, the weekly drawing, whereas the other 90 goes to the jackpot. And so the weekly winner gets a chance to choose a deck from the deck of cards that we have. And if they get the ace of diamonds, they get 50% of the jackpot. Um, we currently have a jackpot of $842, which would mean the winner who would draw the ace would receive $421 with the, with the scholarships and the educational training receiving the other amount. Um, ticket sales are really, or ticket purchasing is really easy. You just go over to this side of the page and it says, you just fill out your name, your contact information, which the biggest thing is giving us a phone number that you'll be able to receive the call on Fridays at 12.30 p.m., which we try to do around lunchtime, and just so it's at a, like a reasonable time for people. And then your address, so we have that if you win, so we can send you a check with your winnings and then the amount. Um, if you do not want to purchase tickets but want to donate to the wrap or the fundraiser so the chase the ace there is a donations button right over here instead and because northeast ahec is a 501c3 this is a tax deductible donation as well for anything donated through us and even if we're using it for like give other opportunities and stuff like that the form's really easy super simple and then if you go back to our main page, we also have it on the side on this button right here. We have Chasey Ace, we have the edu EMS Educational Partnership, 
And then as, as well, we have the donation page for just EMS education, which would not be associated with the Tracy Ace. So 100% would go back to EMS education. On our educational partnership page, which is really easy to find too, because if you go to the top, it's nesdahec.org slash EMS. We have upcoming webinars, the archives webinars, information about the refresher, and another donate tab. Kind of gives a little bit of a history of what EMS and how Northeast AHEC and South Dakota EMS Association kind of got together on this, as well as links to the EMS Association. And if you would like to sign up to get more, hear about more oppor training opportunities, there's also a sign up button right here. Um, the archive webinars actually from our EMS COVID community panels, they are all archived as well, and they all link and everything like that. So they're really easy to view and to see and to access. Um, let me see, what else is there? We also have our upcoming webinars, which will have the archived information as well, links to the EMSA, um, and the options oh, as well. So, sorry, Michaela, could everybody check their mic? Uh, we're getting some massive, massive feedback. Sounds like somebody who's maybe dumping corn. There we go. <laughs> okay, thank you. Go ahead. Yep. And so, yeah, we tried to make this website super easy for everyone to use and also to really provide information for you guys. And we will be adding a page for like, if you need help with Zoom or any, or you're looking for more opportunities outside of EMS, if you're other health providers, we will have a page for that as well. Um, but on this education page, we will have links to, if you need any help with Zoom and stuff like that, we will have resources available as well. So yeah, and then I think that's it on that, unless there's anything you would like to add, Kyle. I was muted, sorry. Um, we did have a question on the chat about um, a basic amount. It is $5 per ticket. And the thing with the tickets is they do get um, taken out each week, so you have to get back in it. It's kind of how these work. Some of you have dealt with these before and um, there's a few of them going on in our area right now. But use ours, go to ours, <laughs> no, we like ours. Um, to answer some questions in the chat, yep, we are actually for the webinar or for the spring training, we'll look to get speakers like how we did last year, but we also will kind of include Lake Area Tech as well on speakers because they have a really good program that we could pull from. And I see that there's a couple of ladies from Watertown who talk about suicide. That would be pretty good too. So, yeah. That'd be great if we can get their names and contact info. That would be fantastic. All right. Do we have anybody else have anything for this evening? Everybody's good with doing another one the 29th. We probably won't do two a month. We just thought that we'd get one going because we haven't had one for a little while. So we thought we'd do this one and then we'll do that do that one on the 29th and then that's going to kind of be the excuse me that's going to kind of be the the theme is we're going to go that last Thursday of the month and we're open to changes too if there's something that pops up that we can't go the last Thursday that's totally fine um, so anybody else anything at all Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate that. Um, one thing that I really want to point out is you saw that website and how much AHEC has incorporated EMS into their ultimate goal. And we cannot thank them enough for the things that they've done uh, for the EMS group in our area, our district, because they go above and beyond, in my opinion. And we've got a lot of really good things in the hopper. And I wish I could share them with you because a lot of them are really exciting but we're not quite there yet to be able to share them. So just know that there's a lot of really, really good 
things coming and um, some of them are going to be really big hopefully if they if they continue to progress like they are so stay tuned hopefully in the very new future we can share some of that stuff with you guys a little bit more um, and and let you know kind of the things that we're working on so if you talk to Michaela see Michaela whatever or email her just thank her for everything that she does because her and Sandy the executive director with AHEC have been um, awesome to work with and they do so much for our group in just the short period of time that we've kind of been partners with this <coughs> excuse me that we've been partners with this they have really really jumped on board with this and it's been it's been fantastic so with that i've got nothing else for tonight guys um, i hope you have a good evening hope you have a good weekend and stay safe and we will see you in a couple of weeks thanks a lot